Cole. That's Cole. Yeah. No, that, that's well, I mean, they like cold beer, don't they? Don't like cold drinks. At least it's not warm anyway. I'd rather have a cold drink. That's a, a little cold. A warm drink. Well, it's free ice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do I hit got it on this thing? This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Uh, well, I hit the record button because, you know, I, I figured why as well just start recording. We're not starting the show yet. Sure. So no, I just, last time that happened, I knocked me off. And yeah, that's how I had to go on back on. Yeah, don't, don't press that for me. Let's see. I was just answering phone calls and stuff because my freaking vehicle, nope. because of how cold it was, I, it, it, my vehicle uh, uh, wouldn't start right away. You know, it's like they got so cold, it's like just, duh, it's just horrible. Oh, I know. Yesterday, before going to Reynolds, my truck wouldn't start, so I had to put the booster on it. Then I got it running. Well, then I'm on my way into town, and a low tire light comes on, obviously, because it's so cold. So I find a place. I air it up. I hit the interstate. My other front low tire light comes on, and it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, uh, there was a big story that happened that uh, I just want to get your thoughts on. Like, uh, like we're not live right now yet, so even though it's recording, that's for the YouTube thing later. And I figure by the time I upload this later, then it'll be okay to talk about. But uh, I just got done off the phone with Mama T. She's not going to be uh, here tonight because, uh, well, she lost her phone, first of all. And second of all, uh, you heard what happened at the bar, did you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I I read the news story. Um, I actually used the story on my news this morning. I just didn't say Little Bobby's. I just said yeah. a bar in Macintosh. Um, yeah, it's, it's but uh, I didn't really. Well, I just heard. Yeah, yeah. I said uh, the, the office was that what it used to be called, maybe or back in the day or before you bought it, the office bar. In yeah, I don't. I think so. I think so. I think so. But yeah, I all I know is um I mean the nineteen year old kid, what the hell was he doing in there? Well, it wasn't a he, it was a she. The person who who uh who oh. she she stabbed one of the, the people that were at, at the bar and the bar technically was not open at the time. They were just opening it up oh, just to get Oh no shit. Whatever. Yeah, it's a long story, and I'm not going to really get into it for right now. For what Tanya tells me, oh, that's fine. We'll we'll let her. That's once yeah, I I able to because she just got done explaining to me right. I, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I I I texted little Bobby last night, but he never replied. So, well, you got all of me today because he he wanted me to pick Tanya up originally to originally to to bring her to over here, but I, I don't <laughs> I can't do that right now. I don't. The car right now because it's at the casino uh, you know it was frozen it was cold it got too cold and it's just like it wouldn't start so I oh it wouldn't it. start no well it would start it started on uh, to the casino so it got me to work on saturday but i was supposed to work yesterday and and uh yeah i i mean i probably could have got it right if it, it really worked out or whatever but it's just like it just uh it is what it is and i'm not gonna Go into that either because it's just like if people watch this later, they're gonna ask too many questions. I just don't need a million questions being asked. Mm -hmm. I'm sure by the time that this goes up, I'll have my car button in. You know, so <laughs> it'll just I'm just yeah, gonna have to get good. I try to get it jumped anyway, and I'm gonna try to try again when it's warmer here later tomorrow, and because it's supposed to be a little bit more warmer, it's not as cold, but you know what I mean. It's not. Like, not as cold as it was. It's going to slowly get warmer by next week. We're going to be 20s, 30s yeah. again. Thank goodness. Because yeah. this is ridiculous. Oh, of course. I mean, I... Hey, I, my furnace went out on Friday morning from 8 oh. in the morning. We did finally got her cooking again about 8 o'clock Friday night. Yeah, you sure. tell me about it. I had my fireplaces going, and it's like old school. <laughs> crazy. That is crazy. I'm setting up the live right now, just so you guys know. How's it going there, there Sam? <laughs> What's up, guys? Oh, man, I tell you, it's just been a weird, been a crazy the last couple of days. But when I when I talked to you at the casino, then uh, 
then the uh, after that, then, then I, I went and tried to start my vehicle up like later on that evening before about an hour. I normally start it up about like uh, 45 minutes before I leave to warm it up if I have to. There's been yeah. a few times I haven't had to, but yeah, the damn thing just doesn't want to buckle. Well, it, it will once it warms up. I think it just got frozen because it's just like, you know, because it's cold. It got like, when it was said it was like 18 below, it, it, with the wind chill, it's like 40 below. You know, so it's just like, oh, it's just terrible, terrible, terrible. That link ain't that my brother, and I don't know if you see that or not. Well, I don't know what to, what am I supposed to do about it? You know, I mean, what, what I just sent it to his, I just sent it to his thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's all I can do is to send it to him. I mean, if he's having issues, he should know how to already come in and stuff. It's like you've done this how many times? So I don't know. Really hey, I couldn't I, do it if my wife wasn't here. Yeah, but you, but at least she knows how to do it. You know, uh, you know like, I own a video podcast company, and I don't know how to get on a Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wally, you know. Wally, inside. Wally, inside voice. Yeah, your inside voice. That's right. I heard that. That's my dogs. Hey, oh. hey. Yeah, you're talking about how cold it is. This dog here is a cattle herder. He's a corgi, and okay. he can't be out in this stuff right now for maybe five minutes, and he seizes up out there. Sure, his his sure, feet sure. get so cold. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. I mean, hey, you know, they, anybody that leaves a dog outside for a long period of time can be arrested, you know. I mean, that's what I say. Yes, they should. Yeah. Yep. So it's yep. cold out. I mean, I understand when it's, you know, not too cold outside. But it's like, you know, no. you know what I mean, though. Even my outdoor animals aren't outdoor animals. If they spend yeah. the night outside, like a few cats we've had, it's in the summer, and they choose to do so. If they if they don't come when we call them at night, when I get up in the morning, they're laying on our on our deck furniture, waiting to get let in. Sure. The cats, sure. our dogs never have been. No, our dogs are are treated really really well. They're part of the family. <laughs> It seems like cats have a way to. to well, the cats to, are too. But 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 it seems like the cats are are, are have a have a good way to. Uh, they they like they they're able to stay out longer than dogs for some reason. I don't know why that is. Like they're more. Oh yeah. It's weird how that works. Yeah, and and we like our cats to be outside too because we live along the river out in the country and especially in the spring when the water floods. All those yeah. critters on the river bottom need to come up somewhere, usually right to our freaking house. So, yeah, yeah. Well, and and our cats they spend the night outside. It's no big deal. They hang out right on our deck and never. yeah, never in the winter, never, never. <laughs> All right, I'm sending you guys the links here so you can share it around here. I'm I'm gonna put it on the Green Bush Sound Swap as well, but I just posted it on my normal page. On just my regular page, so it's easy to share because everybody's been saying they've been having issues sharing the sharing it. So, okay, well, here you go. Then, here we'll just do it like this for now because it doesn't matter. Maybe we'll get more people on, on my on this page than we will on the other. Oh man, well, it, you know what? I tell you what, if anything positive that's happened, you know, this week, I got my office stuff taken care of. I'm so yeah, it looks good. That. I'm so looks good. That. Yeah, thank you. I, you know, I had my neighbor help me with it. You know, put it all together. But you know, it's like, you know, I'm very grateful for that because I, you know, while it might be an easy project for most of you guys who know how to read a manual and everything like that, but <laughs> it's like <laughs> I, I, I get so damn confused about everything, you know, because I'm just not good at putting stuff together, like. Like I know how to do like software and stuff when it comes to or internet related things when it comes to helping people log in and stuff or connect or whatever. But I don't wouldn't know how to build a, a damn computer to save my life, you know. Like from scratch, from the tower up. Oh yeah. Even a laptop looks like it'd be a challenge to put together. I'm sure you know people that know how to do that though, I'm sure. No, I barely know enough to plug it in and, and go. That's well, like, what well, it is. Well, my, people, like, my people are gone. Before before we uh before we go lot or before we officially start the show, I was just asking you like when you started your Grand Forks business place or do you 
GFBS. Uh, where did you uh, like? Were you in charge of, of ordering all the all the equipment as far as like what you wanted and how what your vision was for for the studio? No, um, we just happened to know people and steered us in the right direction. Um, we had a guy that owned a gaming company that helped us out. And then we had another guy and we learned, um, we, we bought, we basically have had the same microphones since day one. Uh, we've tweaked the cameras a little bit. We did order a couple of better ones after learning the hard way, but, um, and other, otherwise most of the stuff that we bought and are not using anymore were like mounts like uh mic stands and 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 light you know um all of our lights and everything now are hung from the ceiling so we we have a lot of extra crap laying around but um no it was just a lot of a trial and error but just some people we knew that knew a little bit about it yeah. um steered us in the right direction and we just kind of went from there and tweaked it you know and we still do all the time we're still trying to get a little bit better and 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 to pick things up another notch okay well, that's good. That's good, because you know, if we ever get to that level where we're where we have a lot of, you know, where I'm able to afford to do a studio like that, I'd like to do it kind of similar to how you, because it seems like you got a pretty nice setup when it's all said and done, anyway. So, all right. Put well, it this way: it gets really warm in there. <laughs> oh yeah, I suppose yeah, with all the all the heat and everything. Yeah. Well, you know, better than being outside anyway. I tell you. All right, ladies and well, I guess gentlemen, today it's just gonna be a complete sausage fest, but it's okay. <laughs> hey, is uh, Mama T, Mama T not coming on? No, uh, she had some stuff going on with her personally, and she lost her phone. And this, yeah, we're, we won't go into too much, but I'll mention a little bit about what what took place. But I'm not gonna say the whole thing, just so you know, because I did, I thought I sent you guys a link on the Facebook page or the. Or the Renegade Radio page, but I, there's a lot of stuff that we've been sending, so I, I probably didn't see it. All right, what's up, everybody? It's Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another great edition of Renegade Radio. We started season two last week, or we started season two last week, and now we're on episode number two. And, uh, man, I tell you, I'm very, very pleased by how all the turnout was for, for last week's episode. Did you guys think it went pretty good for, for the most part? Absolutely, with yeah. The, with the with the double interview, and then uh, well, then uh, Jack ended up showing up. Uh, like as soon as I well turned off the live, then he got a hold of me, and he said, "I'll be ready, whatever," because I was waiting for his email. So it's like by the time he, you know, and I did send it out to, to the link so that anybody could see if they want to come back in or whatever. But so we did like a part two, but it ended up being more like a bonus. Uh, bonus material so it really had it was separate from the actual show I haven't uploaded last week's show yet but I will later this week because last night I uploaded a Sam and I's a little season 2 uh, preview video that we did <laughs> a couple weeks ago just to have something on it anyway uh, but anyway I'm your host with the most Frankie Slauson along with Screaming Sam and, and John Roberts and some of our other crew will be uh, here uh, when they get here uh, we don't really worry about, you know, we, we, we don't like when people get are late, but we don't like, we're not going to fire anybody because they're late, you know, we're not going to scold them out either. Just when they get on, they get on. That's, that's how you keep your team, you know, you don't bitch about the things that, you know, they can't, that they can't control sometimes, you know. Hey, I, I cut my workout at the gym short to make it here by six tonight. Oh, oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. I told my wife she had to cut her workout short Somebody so I could go pick her up and be here. Does anybody hear me? Yeah, what's yes. going on there? I hear dog. somebody. Yeah, I mean, I, they won't let me in. It keeps on, I'm down the number right. It keeps on saying invalid number. My okay, wife well, even me, looked at it. Let me, Something let me try, wrong with let the me, Let me try one more thing here. To Maybe I'll send you the shorter link here and see if that helps you. And just stay on with this. It's not let me in. Just hold on, hold on, hold on. It's fucking frustrating. I'm ready to throw something. Oh, don't, okay. don't throw your knives at it now. <laughs> For those who are wondering, this, that's Mad Dog on the line. He's uh, down with us right now while we're having some issues getting in. But thirty-six years. It's the same. It's the same number that I gave everybody else. So it's hopefully. It'll... Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that line. Look, eight one five three three five nine. 
8048. That's right. Guess what? Invalid number. Please try again. Oh, okay, now I can't make it any simpler than that. <laughs> well, then, you know, then, well, I guess you may just have to just keep staying like this, maybe, if you want. I mean, it's, we can hear you. No, I, I, I'm going to do it again. It just, it, I'm doing the right numbers. It just won't let me in. Yeah, I don't, numbers know, what to, I don't know what to tell you. That, it doesn't ask for a password. Eight one five three three five nine eight zero four eight. Join the meeting. Invalid number. Please check again. Uh, All you have to do is press the link he gives you, and it should go automatically into it instead of you putting the numbers in it. Here, that's what I was going to say. You don't put the numbers in. You just hit the link. No, I have to put the numbers in with my phone. I got an iPhone. You got a different phone than me. My phone requires the numbers to be put on. Meeting number and the ID number. I can't just join in. I got to put the numbers to join the meeting. It says it right here. Oh, well, that's, a, that's, the they, that's the number they gave me, so I don't know what to... What yeah, to I can't tell you why either, man. I'm trying. I mean, I'm missing the damn Stiller game. We're only down three now. We're going to lose anyway, what you, half car. I mean, get it figured out when you can. That's all I can really tell you. You know, they're, lose, they're losing there, anyway. Can you tell me something? All right. We'll just uh, let me try again. I'm going to hang up on you guys. Okay. Hey. Hey, you know, it's uh, that's why I don't like I Martin Luther King Day today, guys. Yeah, happy milk day. You know, is that what they call it? And uh. It's also a big anniversary today. It was 36 years ago today that I was in the plane crash. Oh, really? You know, yeah. we yep. about that last time about your brother and everything. Was that the same one that that your brother was into, or or were you or just separate? No, no, he died after that oh, in a okay. car accident. But uh, Mark, good buddy of mine from Thief River Falls, was in the plane with me. Uh, another girl that was from Thief River was in the plane, and then the pilot was from Crookston. Okay. And 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 how ironic the weather is almost identical to as it is right now. Wow. It was that night when we were laying out in the middle of nowhere, and nobody knew we were out there. Oh, I bet, I, mean, I bet that was scary, dude. So they buddy Holly story all over again. Tell you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> That's why I won't beat fly. up. <laughs> I won't fly. I don't care, man. Yeah. Everyone keeps telling me good fly. Yeah, I, I won't do it either. I'm sorry. I'm a pussy when it comes to that. You hear that, guys? A pussy. You know? <laughs> Why people say to me, what are the odds of you getting in two plane crashes? Well, what were the odds of me getting in one? They're exactly the same. I know. No, I'm, I am. Are. A lot of people don't think I know. they are, but they are. They're yeah, exactly it's like, the ask the stewardess, how often do airplanes crash? And they usually say, oh, just once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm glad that you, you survived it anyway, because, you know, I mean, it's, it would suck just to lose your life over a plane crash. It sucks to lose your life for anything, but it's just, you know, you, yeah. at least you got you get to live for a while, you know, and that's uh, that's good. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, lucky. I'm, I'm, kind of I'm lucky. You up, though, in your life, though, you like should be, Walker, you should be the holiest yeah. guy in the whole world right now. Should be, but I'm not. I mean, <laughs> I, I I'm God-fearing. Um, I know there's, I should have died, but yeah, it, I, I laid in bed for seven months. Um, I had to go to physical therapy six days a week for another seven months. And there was a, a good chance I was going to lose my leg. And then it was, well, you're always going to have a limp and well, then you'll be lucky if you could run a straight line. And a year later I, I ran a hundred miles snowmobile race yeah, awkward. and I, I played many years of ball and stuff, but, uh, I'll be 59 next month and I can't hardly walk right now. <laughs> so I need well, knees, probably a hip. Now. It's different. I've had a bunch of back you're, surgeries. You're, you're, you're old now, so it's different now. You could be. A, hey, shut up, Sean. Yeah. You yeah. bastard. No, I don't mean yeah. that. A, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that, you know, in, in a young bastard. Way, you've lived a long life. So now it's like, you know, you're, you're, you know, these are the golden years. Remember? I feel bad. I feel bad. I'm 65 and I got everything wrong that John has wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, well, I've, I've had, had, I've had 47 that. confirmed broken bones and, and 47 confirmed broken bones. I know I've had more, but 
people have said, geez, if you could deliver your life over again, would you change anything? And I said, yeah, I would have taken more pictures. <laughs> hey, um, there's, there's Matt, Matt yeah, Dog. He made it. Mally broke six in that plane crash. Hey, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm Imagine that. I'm glad that you managed to, to make it and survive it. And, you know. Hey, Cody said hi. Good evening, guys. Oh, hey, what's up, Cody? Good evening. Hi. 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 Jump a uh, bridge. So uh, you must have got it working. So what what happened? I oh, don't know. That was your fault, Sean. You <laughs> son of a bitch. That's right. Motherfucker. Oh, I'm being an ass. Yeah. Anyway. I'm crooked on my phone. I can't get it right. Oh, there you go. There you go. Quit playing with your background. You don't need your background. I do things right. The background is the guy we're going to interview. Hey, that's fine. That's what I like to do. Because I was going to do that originally myself, but now that you do it, I don't have to do it. I can just promote our state, our our podcast. I should put the Steeler Steeler emblem in the back there, but (laughs) no, don't do that. They fucking stink. Game guys, we we're down twenty-one. Not now. It's twenty-one seventeen. You're going to lose, Tone. Who gives a shit? So what, man? What a game. It's only the Pittsburgh Steelers, for Christ's sake. It's a playoff game for nobody. Well, everybody was impressed with well, the You can watch it. You don't have to come on right away. Yeah. Well, won't you he shut up? Oh, I, want to bet. I want to bet on this game if it stays the same. I want uh, <laughs> I'm pulling for it since the Vikings lost. I'm pulling if for If they it. win tonight, I win a yeah. thousand bucks because I bet. $10 to 5000 to 1 that they would make the playoff, would make the first round. Wow. So you better okay, get sir, no way you bet 1000 <laughs> Wow. Well, uh, uh, Sam Miller, uh, up-and-coming comedian, will be our, our guest tonight. We were supposed to have uh, uh, Vincent Berry on as well, but uh, he has other things going on. So he'll be our guest next week after Don Stroud. Uh, can't hear nobody. I guess oh. for next week. Go on. We got two guests next week: hey, Don Stroud and uh, Vincent Berry. But this week we just got one of Sam Miller. And you did some research on Sam, there, Mad Dog. Would you? Uh, did you like what you saw? Did you laugh? Did you enjoy it? Did you not hear? Did you not hear me at all, Tony? <laughs> yeah. Probably can't. talking to you. Crunching. You're not, not answering. You're nobody. Well, you must be blocking your thing. I mean, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm well, looking I'm... right to you. I'm looking right at you. I'm looking right at your eyes. What did you, know? you say, Sean? I'm sorry. I said, uh, did you you did some research on Sam, right? On, on Sam Miller. What did yeah. you think about? What did you like? What you saw? Did you laugh? Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, he was, was all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I watched about three of his films. I didn't watch too many. I just got that, you know, he was clean and sober for fifteen years, and sure, he just put out an album. He got a three album deal. Okay. Two thousand seventeen, he was the comedian of the year. Two thousand sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen, he was best local comedian and best local hero. Oh, that's that's cool. That's cool. Did he, he do BBC stuff? stuff? Like British stuff? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think so. He's originally from, well, he's from the West Coast, so he's he's just <clears throat> finally just going out on tour and doing some touring and whatnot here and there. So because during the pandemic he was he was starting to get his start, like really starting to make it, and then the pandemic came and hurt everybody, so he went and did a different job for the time being until he was okay to do comedy again. So he had to wait a little bit. So yeah, that's everybody hear me okay? Well, I can I can hear you, but you sound you sound a little muffled. Like you know, like your audio is always, but your audio your audio always sounds muffled. Now we're off. But anyway, so, how about now? Yeah, you're fine. I can hear I you. Can't hear nobody again. I, I can, can hear you. you. I can hear you. Now your phone's off. Oh, there you go. Now. Can you hear now? You're the worst. Because you're gonna, you're gonna I'll tell wanna, you what. You you're gonna want to hear if you're gonna ask questions to Sam and stuff. You if know? you quit if you quit chewing on these nuts, you might be able to fucking hear us. <laughs> Not too, <that's... laughs> I was gonna ask you. Yeah, I'm, uh, 
My favorite. Oh, what are you? <laughs> I, 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 oh, they're whoppers. Okay, uh, they're, not, they're not nuts. They're whoppers. Okay. Well, almost the same. You look thing. like a fucking retard. That got. Oh jeez. I can't feel. He got front teeth. My two. Yeah, but you look like a fucking retard. Oh jeez. So is your mother. Uh, oh, wow. Anyway, so uh, hey, George uh, Jorge Jorge or Jorge yeah, Tony's okay. friend. Those your like, yeah. The stream like, is a hundred percent, a hundred signs, and everything looks great. Okay. You know what I bet? Best part of you ran down mommy's leg. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. Are we gonna continue where you guys left off last time because last time. No, uh, I'm done. You guys were really at it, and then then the, then Jack came in, and it's like, oh. That would be good now. <laughs> Who else is coming on? Is it an antique man? I I would hope so. I mean, he hasn't. Uh, Where's Mama Leone at? Oh, uh, Mama T? Yeah, she's not going to make it tonight. She had some stuff going on. And I'm just going to mention it once, uh, just for now. And then when she comes back, then she can tell the rest of the story of uh, what happened. Uh, earlier this weekend, oh, there was an incident that. There was an incident that happened at the bar, and uh, and uh, you know the city of McIntosh, and I can honestly say this because it's true of how they feel about about their bar and everything. You figure that a lot of people in a small town would be supportive of oh we got a, a bar somebody opened up the old bar you know and, and uh, you know it's a place where we can go and do our do our things or whatever and just enjoy ourselves with you know whatever. Well. Bob was trying to do something that that most people don't do anymore. Try to go old school with with, with it and bring in entertainment, bring in you know uh, food, good food, uh, you know good bar food, homemade bar food, rather than stuff that's just from a you know frozen or whatever like most people do. Like, oh, you want a pizza? Oh, we'll we'll, we'll give you a a, a pre made pizza that's already frozen. They, they call it our own or whatever. No, they make everything from scratch. Is what they what they normally do. So, you know, there's a lot of dedication to that. That's the way Bobby wanted it. Well, eventually, after some time has flown by, and it has nothing to do with pandemic or anything, because that's when Bob bought the bar. He bought it, he created it after his father died. And his, you know, I think it was something that he's always wanted to do, to, to have something that was his. Because, you know, his life was kind of well, up and down, and you know, all that too, with how, he, how he's lived and everything. Hasn't always been perfect and everything. Uh, but as the years have gone by, people have uh, started to turn their backs on Bob and his business and, and make it look like he's nothing but a fucking joke when he's not a joke, when, uh, when he's actually trying the best that he can, but nobody wants to come. You know, he's offering specials. He's offering this. He's doing a normal, what a normal bar would do and the entertainment. And, you know, even on the weekends, depending on who he gets, you know, it's like he can't feel, he can't, most times, unless it's a big, big shindig, like in the summertime or whatever, most times he can't fill that bar, you know, unfortunately. People will rather go elsewhere. They'd rather go somewhere else, even if it's right in their hometown of Macintosh. Thief Fever is the same way. Uh, Thief Fever, you know, people love the rust and nail, but, you know, there's more to life than the nail. I will tell you that. You know? Do they like blues in that neighborhood? No. No, they they don't yeah. understand. They don't understand it. <laughs> they, they'd rather the have city a of McIntosh. The city of McIntosh doesn't understand the blues. Bobby is very very well known, and and the the the, the blues has a very big following in, in our neck of the woods. It really does. Um, yeah, it's a it's a crappy deal there. Um, things haven't always gone the best. My wife and I have been there numerous times. Uh, we try to stop by there whenever we're going down Highway Two. No matter what, we drop in, um, and 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 it's such a small town. It's a farming, very conservative little. I used to live in the town right next to it, Foston. I was a sports director at a radio station there. Tough place to own a bar, man. Tough place, and um, yeah, I I get it. It sucks for them because uh, they don't get a lot of support. Most of their support are guys like. Sean, like you and me and my wife and people from Thief River and Grand Forks that come from out of town to go support their events, and it's too bad. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, then you're lot, stuck driving home, you know. Of, and it's, so it's a lot of uh, 
just people that buy I'm new trying to be old bent. friends and whatever that come and support more than any, I mean, you'll probably get a, a random, you know, few new people here and there, but not many, many, many people from the actual area of Macintosh. Hard the same that. way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you I mean, I knew Bobby's dad. Yeah, I, I knew Bobby's baby. grandpa. Oh, sure. Yeah. But like, like for your bar, Sam, you're in a bigger city. I mean, people should be coming over left and right. You know, no, I don't know. Lots of bars in that in, in that city, but you know, <clears throat> I mean, I've never owned a bar, so I don't understand the, the daily struggle. And I would be a part of it if it was struggling. If it's if it's something that we can make a success and and, and look at it like a positive thing than a negative thing, I just think it's just uh well, well but I'll, I'll get to the point. They had a fight. Something happened this weekend. Uh, somebody started a fight with somebody, and it got pretty brutal, and it got some media attention. And that's all I'm going to say for now. Well, I, saw, I, saw, the, I saw the clip. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did, because I wasn't sure if anybody did or not. But, that was, but see, here's the thing about this, how I don't how, how the world around in our area, and John, can, <coughs> can offer, like, you, you probably can agree with this point, how... We our area is kind of fucked up a little bit, and I'll say that with a, with a strong F word, you know, fucked up, because they'll support a guy like Neil Carlson, who has <laughs> David Dr. I'm name dropping the guy. I don't care, he, you know, he, he's a guy that has that doesn't know well, his ass from a hole in the ground. We'll just say he's an ambulance but, chaser. But but we will we will talk about him after because our guest has arrived. He's, he got here early. Good. So we'll take care of this, and then we'll we will uh, talk more about it afterwards. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got Sam Miller with us, comedian Sam Miller. Sam Miller. Miller earlier, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's nice to have guests come a little early sometimes. I see a picture of him, but I don't see Sammy. He's just, Here's Sammy. <laughs> He's just getting everything all set up here. You know, pop up. There he is. Hey, hey. How's it going, it. Hey. Uh oh, <laughs> what's I'm hanging in there. What's going on? Happy, happy Monday to you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, welcome to Renegade Radio. I, I know that you've been on many podcasts before, so I don't know how much different this will be compared to any other show that you've been on. It's not Bob and Tom, but we can try to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard to compete with Bob and Tom. They just got their million dollar <laughs> studio and all that, you know. So, and they make you look like they make you look like a star, anyways. I know. Okay. Yeah, it's worked out pretty well. I'm happy with Bob and Tom. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we will uh we'll we'll, we'll introduce ourselves to you since you don't really know any of us uh, and, and whatnot, and then we'll we'll let you kind of go into we'll start asking some questions and we'll we'll do a big introduction anyway. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have with us uh, comedian Sam Miller, and Sam is a uh, up and well. I would you say you wouldn't really say up and coming comedian, or, or or would you say an up and coming comedian? You've been doing this for a while. I have and, no idea what's going getting, on with my getting, career right now. <laughs> you're getting a lot of attention. We'll just say because I've seen you on YouTube a lot and Facebook and everything, and you're oh yeah. You, you seem to you seem to be in the in the media spots. Every time I go on YouTube Shorts or Facebook Shorts, sometimes some of your Videos will pop up, or some of your, you know, comedian, comedian uh, live events will pop up, and that's how I got to figure, or know you in the first place because of that. It seems like that yeah. helps, you know, get guests sometimes. Uh, but uh, I'm Frankie Slossom. I'm I'm the co-owner of uh, Renegade Radio. We started back in August of last year. Uh, this is our second season, so uh, we I, I have a career in broadcasting on and off, and. Uh, always wanted to do a podcast where we can uh, uh, bring some good guests in and have fun and, and bring a little flair to Northern Minnesota because there aren't too many people around here that do this yeah. episode compared to where you're from and everything where people are doing this all the time. It's no big deal. You know, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. It's a podcast, no big deal. You know, but here in Northern Minnesota, people don't have much for entertainment because we're in small town USA. So it's like, you know, we're trying to entertain everybody. So that's, that's good. So I'm, 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 I'm yeah. Frankie, and I'll let uh, we'll start with Screaming Sam, and we'll just kind of go around and let everybody introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Screaming Sam. I was uh, a a Sam Kinison tribute artist back in the day. Oh, okay. And 
Yeah, it was sponsored by the Kinnison family and stuff like that. So, yeah, this was me back in the day. I have to show you. Don't fall off the chair. <laughs> oh, there you go. That was me. <laughs> yeah, that was me back in the day. I was sponsored by the Kinnison family. Good friends with Bill Kinnison. Uh, did a lot of comedy. I wrote my own comedy, too, doing the Sam stuff. You know, oh, trying nice. to put some some new stuff in with the old stuff, and yeah, I've done that since 1998, and retired just recently. So can't I can't move around on stage like I used to. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> Five years old, I can't move around that much anymore. Yeah, but that's about all. That's all I you know. Pretty much, I uh, owned a bunch of businesses growing up, and here I am. That's living what's a, up. Living a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Mad dog, go right ahead. Hey, I'm Mad Dog Tony Lutzel from Pittsburgh. And you know how hard it is for me to sit here when my our Steelers are coming back. And I know, back. right? It's killing me. <laughs> but anyways, I was uh I was in the burial business for 43 years and I was a professional wrestler for 28, which I made recently I made the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame here in Pennsylvania. Oh I'm hell yeah. Tino and George Animal still. I was the mad dog. And I that's what's up. Who and the mad dog takes a bite out of you, brother. And that's that spot my bio, but I'm happy to be here because I love comedy too. I tried that for a little bit, but uh, sort of the stage fright took over, you know. <laughs> Stuff. Did you see my shirt? Hey, do you see my shirt, Anthony? The shirt I'm wearing right now? No, I can't see yeah, it. I got a Mick Foley oh. shirt on right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Harry. Mick started yeah. off with Harry, which nobody knows. The dumb bastard used to jump off his roof trying yep. to get the WWE to look at him, but. I did two matches with Mick. Oh, that's awesome. He was a rough character, boy. Rough yeah. character. Mick's a good guy. Yeah. And then we got John Roberts on, up, up top there. Go ahead, John. Hey, uh, it, nice to meet you, Sam. Um, I am actually live up in the and, – and Sean didn't mention this. We live in the tundra where we are. I'm I'm about an hour from Sean. Um, I'm in – we're an hour, basically an hour from Canada, right at the North Dakota Minnesota border. Oh but wow! Yeah, I'm an old radio guy. I've been doing it for forty some years. Now I have a video podcast company called GFBS. Uh, stands for Grand Forks Best Source. We do have all kinds of shows: political, racing, movies, sports, yada yada yada. Uh, I work. Uh, I'm a racetrack announcer. I'm a hockey play-by-play -play radio guy. I still do. I got a big game coming up tomorrow. And I've been kind of hanging around with these guys for a while now and uh, having a blast with it. Get to meet people like you. And uh, it's a pleasure, by the way. What kind of racing? Is it like dirt track stuff? Yeah, yeah. All dirt That's... track. In fact, um, I don't know if you're if you're familiar with dirt track racing, but I am. like the announcer of the World All Laws, Johnny Gibson, a friend of mine, friend of mm -hmm. ours, um, he considers our racetrack where we live is the number one racetrack in the on the planet that's awesome in fact it's been voted as they do the vote every four years you know between uh well it's all north america and australia and new zealand that's the only place they race dirt track anymore but um the raciest racetrack on the planet and my racetrack got it so that's awesome um it, it's really cool because anybody that knows anything about racing knows about this racetrack if they're in a dirt track race and i'm just I'm just lucky enough to get to be the boys. So I got some yeah, friends that race. Like this, it's like 900 below right now. Yeah, it's freezing. I got friends that race uh, sprint cars. And um, I'm also good friends with Jerry Wayne Longmire, who's been working with the World of Outlaws. Uh, where, yeah. Yeah. Where do you live? I live in Olympia, Washington. I go out to Grace Harbor Raceway. Grace Harbor Raceway sure, is about sure. 40 minutes from my house. They run a, Outlaws exactly. run a Sunday race every year here. So. Okay, do you know an announcer, a racetrack announcer? Have you ever heard of him? His name is Dale Kunis. That sounds familiar, but I'm not for sure. So, yeah, he's right up in that Olympia area. Anyway, he comes up here once once a year. He makes a trek up here, and I'll let him come up in the booth with me and stuff, and we yeah. have a good time. But yeah, stand up, cool. stand up yeah. comedy you has. Want up, you ever want to come up to a good World of Allah show, man? Look me up. I love that. Stand-up comedy has ruined my uh, race car fandom because I work every Saturday, so I don't really get to go to races yeah. that much anymore. But it's good I'm working, though, so that's something. 
Yeah. 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 No kidding. You can always watch racing on TV on Fridays. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Like go to DVR too, even if it's not the same. Just don't hang out with people that are going to spoil it for you, I guess. Yeah. Else for you. Well, we're, we're happy to have you on here, Sam, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really actually surprised that you agreed to, to come on because I, I, as, as much as, as a big deal as you are, as I, as I believe you are anyway, I would figure you'd have no time for little old us, you know. Dude, I'll do. I honestly, I just say yes to everything. I don't really care. It's it's more interesting than like my taxes that I should be doing. So. <laughs> well, I feel uh, so much better now. Thanks, man. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd just be flipping through to see what's not on TV. <laughs> yeah. No, that's uh, that's that's awesome to hear, though. I mean, it's it's nice to have a guy with a positive attitude that. Doesn't think that he's better than everybody else just because he has to oh, success man. and everything, you know. Like, yeah. so, yeah. That's 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 good. I, you know, I, that makes me that makes me more of a fan of yours anyway because you know I you you seem like you know in your flow of your comedy, no matter what you're talking about, you seem like you you just you know you it's gonna make sense even if it takes a little bit to get to the to the to the punchline or whatnot. I was watching. Yeah, not the- like uh, not like Burke Crusher. <laughs> who, who yeah. never answered my call after I used to know him. Now he's big now. He don't want to answer my calls. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah, hard. I'm not there's somebody else. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Uh it does get tricky. Like I have a booking agent now, and uh because I was I was losing track of stuff. And uh sometimes, you know, um I I still struggle with that, and I struggle sometimes. I'll forget, like I'll say I'll do a podcast like this and occasionally I can get mixed up and forget stuff, but I try to write everything down, you know, so I want to leave people in the lurch. Oh, that's good. So. Hey, uh, in 2021, you won the Seattle International Comedy Competition. I got second place. I lost to a Canadian. <laughs> who was who did you lose to? I, I told me I saw in your bio it says you won that. that no, nah, I was runner. I was runner up um to danny danny martinello uh he's from edmonton he's a great comic we're good friends so but i let my country down so (laughs) (laughs) you're a funny guy i was watching you all weekend yeah just tell them our our hockey in the united states is better than theirs in canada what is if you're in minnesota where you guys are (laughs) how often you do comedy sam Man, I do uh, generally three or four shows a week. Um, uh, I'm booked uh, most every Friday and Saturday. I'm performing somewhere. I make most of my money on Friday and Saturday and have most of my fun. I just got back. You'll appreciate this. I was just up in Lake Chelan, which is in the mountains in Washington State, and it was negative eight when I performed on Friday. So if you get up in the mountains, it gets cold out here, man, real cold, real quick, and it's hot in the summer, too. So, yeah, I bet it is. I'm yeah, originally from well, I'm from Pittsburgh. I moved to Florida for 20 years, then up to Ohio. Tell me, I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Pittsburgh, and I'm missing the Steeler game. <laughs> you're, not, you're missing nothing, eh? You're not missing anything. <laughs> hey, uh, Sam, I seen you've been cleaning sober for 15 years. How was that to to uh, and I, I don't know if you want me to bring it up, but was it a tough thing to get, you know, your stuff back on track? And, you know what I mean? Because in the comedy world, if you ain't drinking and doing a couple bumps before you get on stage, you're not much of a person, right? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think comedy's changed a lot. I think uh, you can look at the comedy landscape in the 80s and the 90s, and you can be strategic about the decisions you're making, you know. Um, we lost a lot of great comedians to drugs and alcohol, you know. My favorite comedian, um, uh, I'm blanking. You know, I, I swear, I Mitch Hedberg, right? Is uh, uh, and I got, you know, I got to meet Mitch numerous times. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know, I, you know, I love, I love Mitch Hedberg's comedy, and I wish I could get to meet him, but he's not with us anymore um, hmm. because that stuff caught up to him, you know. So there's a few things I'm doing. So like, I, I have a, I'm in recovery. I love being in recovery. I love being clean and sober. Um, I also take care of my mental health. I, I, I have a therapist and all that kind of stuff. And also I'm careful when I'm driving because that's the other thing that kills us. So yeah, uh, yeah. 
Well, talking my about friend, I, I want to ask you this, Sam. You said uh, you said you're you you hired somebody because your memory sometimes you forget things and you have to write things down and blah blah. I'm the same way, um, but I drink. Um, yeah. You quitting drinking did that help that at all, or are you well, just one of them things you just forget full and gall darn and I'm never going to get any better at it. Um, I don't know if um my drinking or drug use contributed to my memory issues because i don't really remember what it was like before so um i uh um and also i've been doing stand-up for nine years and i've been sober for 15 so all, i've never known comedy as a um as someone who's actively drinking or using so yeah, I have no idea. Maybe I'm funnier. Maybe I'm funnier when I'm drunk. I'll just never know. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Find out easy. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. I'm sitting here first... drinking a beer. Yeah, I, see, I, 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 I seen the thing about Artie, Artie Lang. Here's a guy that should be dead. Mm-hmm. As many things as he's been through, and he's, he's still living. He, he, yeah, he beat a lot of. You know, he's still living. He just he's. He's, he's so much on drugs, his nose exploded. Yeah. Just, when I was doing security for the comedians, we had to keep an eye on him. We lost him in Homestead, Pennsylvania for like an hour and a half. He was late for his show. It was horrible. And we yeah. all got broke. That was terrible, man. So it probably is good for you not to do it while you're drunk. Hey, yeah. I signed, a, I signed your record deal October 27th in 2023, Ron Tripp, and then you got a three-album deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Outer. Um, yeah, so I recorded album one, um, April of last year, it debuted number one on uh, iTunes for for three days. Uh, it's going really well. I sell a lot of vinyl on the road. I love being on stand up records. I like my label. They're a, they're a great record label for working comedians like me, road comedians, because uh, a thing that's great, like uh, the splits aren't as there's other labels that will offer you better splits but I can buy all my material at cost basically. So, cause I make most of my money selling merch, you know, like the way comedy is anymore. There's not a lot of, there's not a huge amount of money in streaming or anything like that. You right. know, the money, the money's, the money's at the shows, the money's with the merch, you know, and uh, it's getting better, man. I'm not struggling as much as I used to. I mean, it's still like the margins are slim, because now I'm having to pay for travel and rental cars and stuff like that. So I'm I'm not rich or nothing like that. It's a little bit better than it used to be, but Where I ain't do you rich. Travel to? Where do you, tra- you travel all over the place or? Oh, yeah. Now like, I do. You ever, you ever come around to Pittsburgh and Ohio area or Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do Pittsburgh, Ohio. I was just in St. Petersburg not too long ago. I'm headed back there. Um, I've done a lot of stuff in the Midwest because of Bob and Tom. Um, I'm going about to uh, Wichita, Kansas here, coming to Peoria, Illinois. And oh, I wow. love Chicago. Chicago is my comedy home away from home. I love doing comedy in Chicago. Um, and I'll be back out there very soon. And I'm going to Minneapolis here in a couple of weeks, too. Yeah, I did so. Chicago. I did the... What's that, Tony? Did you ever do the Carnegie Music Hall in Pittsburgh? No, man. I haven't been to Pittsburgh, man. <laughs> no. If you did. You ought to. You ought to come here. But beautiful, beautiful place. I mean, for comedians, because I do yeah. a lot of. Here. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go to Pittsburgh. I'm scared someone's going to hit me with a brick or something. So that's all uh, I hear. About it. <laughs> they wouldn't hit you anyway. They can't. And they, hit, they couldn't hit the side of a building. Brick. <laughs> yeah, did you ever get hit by somebody throwing something? Don't worry about it, Pittsburgh. Hey, do you know the the venue you're playing in Minneapolis? um yeah like you know well here um i think it's called club well, we can Under- look you up. it's club underground is what it is um okay. Okay. No, i have it i have it right here i'm so I'm, I'm i'm pretty quick with this watch this i'm at um oh shit i didn't update my website i guess i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i thought i, I mean, knew. that's all right that's only a five-hour drive for us so yeah, yeah hey, I'll do be, you have a- I'm in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, too. Um, wait, no, there it is. I'm at, yeah, I'm at Club Underground on February 9th. And the 10th, I'm in Eau Claire, Wisconsin at a place called The Plus. Um, looking forward to it. February 9th, so that's on Friday. Awesome. Yeah, I, did, I did Chicago, a place was down, down in the basement. 
they had a comedy club down in the basement in Chicago. I forget the name of the place I was at. Place is in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, they have. I think I think they have seven or eight comedy clubs in Chicago. It's pretty great. You got um, you know, you Zanies. Upstairs and downstairs. Yeah, I uh I'm I've performed, I've headlined at the Laugh Factory in Chicago. I got really lucky. Um I had a really good set one night. One of my favorite comedy memories is at the Comedy Underground. I mean, uh, at the Laugh Factory in Chicago, and I had the I had the last spot on the late late show on Saturday. It was probably one thirty in the morning by the time I went up on stage, and uh, I was I, initially I was excited. I was like, "Oh boy, they're letting me close it out!" And then it turns out that that's not the spot you want. Um, but luckily. I got the kind of comedy that can get people's attention, you know? So, um, and also I only had to do 15 minutes. So I was like, all right, I'm doing my greatest hits, you know? And uh, I had a great set, man, got a standing ovation. And then they invited me back for a whole week, including a headlining spot. And that was, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Cause in the Pacific, in the Pacific Northwest, um, you know, we got the comedy underground up in Seattle and then you got helium down in Portland and uh, some smaller clubs that are great, but they're smaller. Um, but there's just not a lot of comedy clubs in where I'm from, you know. It's a lot of bar shows. I do wineries. I do brew pubs, casinos, um, whatever I can get my hands on, you know. I'm not picky. Hey, Art, what about um, you, Sean? Do you have anything to ask, Sean? <laughs> I'm just letting you guys take <laughs> over. It's fun watching you guys. <laughs> you guys got mad at me last week for asking too many questions. So I'll take all the interview last week, so. I'm letting you have uh, this week. Tony got mad at you, not me. <laughs> I know. Ah, I'm only teasing. Damn, aren't you kind of like a giant? Aren't you a pretty ginormous dude? Yeah, I'm a big dude. I'm about 6'6", six, six, I'm 6'2", and what, 240, and I, I, I'm nothing compared to you, man. You're a big guy, aren't you? Yeah, hey. about, I'm six foot six. Yeah, about 360 pounds. I'm a big what? guy. Could probably get their attention by saying, "If you don't sit down, I'm going to kick your ass." <laughs> <laughs> no, do, you, do you poke? Do you, do you tend to poke fun at yourself? Because let's oh, say, yeah. face it, you stand out in the crowd. You know, well, I mean, do you use that a lot in 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 your stand up routine? It doesn't make sense for a guy like me to really make fun of people, considering the way I used to live my life. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, I, I, I just kind of, I kind of stay in my lane, honestly. Like I talk about my own experiences and I make fun of myself, you know, I, uh, I, I love, I, I love who I am now today. Um, and I've worked really hard to get where I'm at and I've gotten a lot of help. And also I got a little bit lucky too, you know, it's all, it's all a part of it, you know? So. Well, I, I definitely hard. say I, I like the outfits that you wear because you, you definitely, Definitely stand out in the, in the crowd, even if it's not just because you're. I look behind me. There's a couple of them behind me. You got the you know, Hawaiian shirts going on, and it's just like, oh, that's awesome. It's just this is like a guy from the '80s, like back, you know, breaking to comedy in the. Yeah. <laughs> you, must doing, you must be doing pretty good. You scored a Grammy Award-winning producer. I mean, what's his yeah. name? And uh, Dan Dan Schlissel from Stand Up <laughs> Records. Man, he's great. The S's weren't sliding too well. I might have said pistol or something. <laughs> no, you're you're almost there. It's Dan Schlessel. Yeah, he's great, man. He's a good guy. I talk to him a lot, actually. You know, um, I have a lot of friends that are comedians, but it's a competitive industry, and like, um, we all kind of compete with each other a little bit. Um, we still love each other, but it's it can get a little messy. But it's nice because Dan's actually on my team because. If I do well, he does well. And if he does well, I do well. So it's interesting. You know, we're working on album two right now, actually. So somebody, one of our hey. audiences want to hear a joke, want to hear like a small laugh, for the, a joke for the renegade audience. Oh. I don't know if you have anything put away there. You can just. Yeah, I wrote this the other day about how uh, a lot of times um, I sneeze really hard. And when I sneeze, it makes me fart. But nobody can hear the fart because the sneeze is too loud. But now everybody thinks my sneezes smell like shit. There, there's a joke. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that. that. <laughs> John, you to steal your joke. That's, that's a word. Hey, right I got, there, I got bro. somebody asking me. I have somebody asking me, Sam. Do you have a favorite comedian? Yeah, Mitch, Mitch Hedberg. And then, um, you know, what's wild too, man, is getting to be in this industry right now, man. There's a lot of comics, you know, um, 
I love that uh, comedy has introduced me to like this really diverse community of folks that I usually wouldn't be around, you know? So um, in Seattle and Portland, especially, man, there's these really funky comedy scenes and these really funky comedians that have perspectives that people haven't heard yet, you know, and that, those are my favorite, you know, is I like it when I got somebody up on stage and I'm like, holy shit, like what, what's going to come out of their mouth? You know, I never met nobody like yeah. that before. And that's, See, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Day, at, at a radio station I worked at, uh, we had a big comedy club here in Grand Forks called the Westward Ho. And Mitch Hedberg used to play there a lot. Um, Bob Zaney used to come into our morning show. Hedberg used to come into our morning show all the time. But Mitch would be, hey, guys, I got to take a break. In our in our radio station, we have five yeah. stations right downtown in the city. I got to take a break. He'd stand right outside the door and light up a big old, old doobie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning, he didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the day he died. I was at the Sizemere Comedy Club, and the Bobby Joel, who owns the club, he come in to where everybody goes, I just found out Mitch died. You know, he died, and, yeah. like, all the comics were, like, depressed and, like, oh, man, I can't oh, believe it. I guess no. he was big down in Florida, Mitch. He's one of the I, best. No, I know. He's I know. He's great. In Minnesota. Yep, he was great. Yeah, him and uh, I don't really do a lot of comedy like that like i have one liners and i have a lot of quick tags but um to be able to write comedy that's that efficient him and steven yeah. Wright, him and steven Wright are kind of my two Very of my similar. favorites yeah because i don't like honestly like i have a hard time listening to com comics um just because i'm around comedy so much like i'm i'm always listening to my features and my hosts and uh yeah, well, your comedy is more of a story you know, and when you can when you can relate to your life experiences and stuff instead of the one liners like, like you're talking yeah. to Stephen Wright. Yeah, know. I take a lot of pride, though, if you um, if you listen to my stuff and break down, break it down, um, it's actually pretty structured. A lot of it. And like I do mess around a lot, but I make sure that uh, my uh, that I'm getting the kind of laughs that I need to get, you know for and and a lot of times man it's funny because some crowds um i'm not everybody's cup of tea and i've come to accept that you know that's the best ones man <laughs> yeah yeah i had a lady i was actually in chelan you know and it's a pretty it's like a, it's called winter fest and it's a pretty a lot of really wealthy people out there you know and uh i had a joke it was about uh trying to date when you're homeless and trying to get a middle-class woman under a tarp with me you know and uh <laughs> Uh, and there was a lady I said, I was like, uh, I said, I was like, yeah, so I used to be homeless. And this lady was like, oh no. <laughs> she said, hey, best thing about banging a homeless yeah. girl, drop her off anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I was seeing in 2016, you were the best local hero. In 2017, <laughs> you were the best, uh, best local comic and 2018, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that be winning those best of Olympia things. It, it makes me look really good, but it doesn't look very good for Olympia. You know, like, um, <laughs> all I did was stop doing drugs and they're like, wow. You're amazing. I am you put all the drug dealers out of business. Oh, you're funny. Yeah. One of our faithful uh, listeners, Dan O'Keefe, he said, uh, another great guest. He likes you a lot, man. He oh, thinks that's you're awesome. great guest. Yeah. That's good, man. Yep. Yeah, we're we're, we're, we're honored to, to have you out here. You you just seem so so life likable, you know. It's like, you know, yeah. I never, I never forget that. Never, you no, know, never forget where you come from because you know there's a lot of people that let money take over and success and fame and and then they become assholes and you, you know and you don't seem like somebody who's like that. You seem like somebody who just like like I've said before. You just I wish I had some more money though. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, everybody does. But like, but you don't seem to let it bother you. No, you're no, more successful, like more no. successful. Yeah. You know. Do you think of your own jokes when you do them? Like like when you did the prison thing and that that was freaking hilarious. I was just wondering, is that from life experience or you take your life yeah. experience? Jokes? I was I never did prison time, but I, I got locked up a lot, especially over this like uh there's like a four year period where I just did a I was did, did a lot of time, almost, you know, um months and months at a time. And um I don't uh you know, sometimes it's weird. Like, even you asking me that question, 
like I'm kind of like I get kind of stuck there again sometimes like I'm I'm fine but like I'm not ready for it sometimes you know cuz uh you know a lot of us comics we don't want to admit it but a lot of us are really sensitive people and uh I uh, I was in a bad way for a long time and that's one of the reasons I think you know what Sean said one of the reasons I think I'm so grateful for my success is isn't because of how good it is now it's because of how bad it was then right gotcha. um I'll tell you what, what about yeah. Craig Gass used to hate comedians? He is even at a website, I hate comedians.com. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of comics. They're a bunch of babies. I dealt with them. Yeah. They're a bunch of babies, man. Some well, it's a it's a brutal, it's a brutal existence if um if you don't have that thing, you know, the um it's this weird comment. I try to explain it to people. It's this thing where like you have to not care at all, and also you have to care so much. So, um, when I go up on stage, that's, that's my celebration. Everything else is just a lot of work, you know, um, doing stuff like this is actually, like I said, this is enjoyable. Oh, like I, I like, that. I like talking to you guys. You guys are nice. Yeah. So, yeah. I used to, when, I did com- when I did comedy back in the day, I hung out with a couple of comedians and we, we went to New York and stuff and they were feeding off each other. When they went on stage, we did the, this place called the cellar down mm-hmm. up in New York yeah. The comedy cellar. Yeah. And these guys went th- these guys went down that cellar and they fed off what we were doing in the van. I thought that was brilliant that they were making jokes about what was happening in the van on the way to New York from Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I thought that was great. You know what I mean? It was I think there a lot of them are very, very talented when it comes you, to writing. Burr? What's that? Yeah, I wonder if Sam ever met Bill Burr. He's like one of my favorite comedians. I haven't. He's kind of on a uh, what do you call it? He's on a different echelon than me. A lot of yeah. those folks. So like, I'm basically like, um, I've gone from a regional headliner to now and na- I've only been a national headliner for probably honestly about the last year and a half. Where I'm working all these comedy clubs now, you know. Um, the before that, I mean, I've been doing it nine years. It's been a full time gig for over two years now and uh the the first year was basically like held up by t-shirt sales and uh that's really how it went like (laughs) I, i sell a lot of merch and stuff like that and uh that's the only way i was able to do it there was a working a lot in like rural oregon and rural washington and these logging towns um you know and it made me a way better comedian i can work any crowd i can work in a city i can work in the country um i can work in the south north east west i could care less man like if you get me if you put me in front of people that want to see stand-up comedy there's a good chance i'm going to do very well in front of those people because i i I live i live for this like this isn't something that i do this is something that i am like sometimes i wish I, i like sometimes i hear about comics quitting i'm like man i wish i could do that but that's just not how I'm built, you know? That's just not how I'm built. Right. I suppose that's you, awesome. Uh, you do stuff like, well, you said you're you're from the West Coast, so uh, obviously you've probably been to a little town called Astoria. Oh, yeah, dude. I love Astoria. Oh, I yeah. Do I, I, if, if, if I ever had a chance to live there down there and actually like <laughs> live there for to, like, like how I live here, uh, I would do it in a heartbeat. I just... Uh, don't know anybody over there so i just kind of feel you know but i guess that could that could that could just be just i'll hear i'll tell you something wild there's a very good chance that i might be recording album two in astoria at the liberty theater in astoria i've been to that liberty theater too mm -hmm. uh uh, you know goonieville you know for yeah yeah i've been there twice uh, 2008 and 2012 and you know i may decide one day just to go back there because there was we went on the amtrak and had a good time, and it just uh, it looks just like it did back in the back in the eighties and nineties. You know, kind of has that feel. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love I love Astoria. I like uh, I like you know you go thirty minutes south, you're out on the Oregon coast. You know, yeah. you go up to the longest sandy beach in the mainland United States is uh, in Long Beach, Washington, uninterrupted sand beach, right there. So it's crazy. Bridge. You got that bridge, you know. That, yeah, that bridge, yeah. The, Astoria and Washington. That's that's cool. Short Circuit was filmed there. Yeah, uh, 
kindergarten cop Goonies. Yep. Turtles three. Have you been to the the Goonie house and? The- I've done all that stuff. Yeah, I go to Astoria a lot. So okay, I do. About, There's about, about the best little restaurant right on the other side of the bridge. Oh geez, I don't even know. It was voted that in huh. some. My wife goes used to go up there a lot for work. She's she's behind me here barking at the at me here saying, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> "I'm sorry." No, you're fine. I uh, I do. So my career, a lot of times, it was um, I would do these runs basically. So I had. I had an inland run where I would head south and I would do like um, Portland, Salem, Eugene, uh, Roseburg, Medford, um, down into San Francisco. Um, But also I like to do this coastal run where I'll go Astoria, Lincoln City, Newport, and then all the way down into Eureka, into the Redwoods, Gold Beach, which is on the way. Um, And unfortunately, now it's kind of hard to make that work. Um, because the 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 math has changed as far as like uh how i how i need to make money right now to support um the travel costs but uh i am excited i am going i am going out there to eureka here at the end of the month i think i just lined something up so so what's the what's the liberty theater gig uh, did you just like have your agent uh, uh, pick out some gigs for you or, or no this or? this this agent thing is a relatively new, uh, is relatively new to me. Um, and, uh, it's, I've been booking all everything myself for a long time and he's just now coming on and I'm, I'm giving him like, there's things that, um, I was doing myself that I'm giving him, but then also he's finding new things for me, including taking a run down to, down to Tampa there. Um, cause I've done, I was in St. Pete's, but I think I'm supposed to be, I might be hitting side splitters here. So, um, I hope that's the move. Um, and then also in Boca, Boca Raton, Boca Raton, I don't know. Wait, do you hit side splitters down in, um, down there in Florida? Tampa? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, I got Bobby relatives. Joel. Tell Bobby Joel, you know, screaming Sam, see what he says. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be he, interesting. He could be an ignorant motherfucker anyway, but you know, they yeah. do, they do all right. Um, and then you know, headed up. I just got back from Macon in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, and I'm doing really good in Knoxville, and I guess they really want me in Nashville, too, so um, I'm just hanging on, man. Like, I'll go I'll go anywhere if I can make it work, you know? Well, how many so, comedy clubs does he have now? He had two when I left Florida. Man, I don't even know. A lot of this stuff is really wild right now because, um, like, Helium... I think they, the company that owns Helium has like 11 or 12. And then there's, um, yeah, I don't even understand the landscape, honestly. Um, It doesn't really matter. Because, you know, I'll tell you something, and this is something that I'm proud of, is that um, that whole first year, all these little places that I've performed at, um, all these little bars, all these little restaurants and stuff, if I need to, I could never work another comedy club and be just fine. I could do all these little theaters out in the middle of nowhere and make enough money to eat. You know, I don't have to like, you know, I don't like to crawl before anybody, you know? Right, so, right, right. Um, I used to love doing biker bars and stuff. Oh okay. yeah. I'll, I'll play the game. Like I will play the game because I, cause that it's okay to play it. But um, I don't, I don't worry about, cause it, honestly like live nation owns like, so many venues now or has these exclusive deals with these venues and same thing with uh bark entertainment they own they have i think nine clubs now and wow. i can't work at bark entertainment you know because me and their owner got in a little dispute but i can't talk about that on the podcast so, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah you could <laughs> so, you, so you, you're not you're, you're not somebody that uh charges a well i mean i'm sure you got to charge a good amount of money to to show up but i mean it seems like you're you're more you're an affordable comic like like basically hey what it comes down to is it after expenses i need to make about a thousand bucks a week um you know expenses are high though so you know that's what i tell these folks and like a lot of times i need to make a little bit i should it's probably more than that honestly because i have to make up for um other weeks where I don't make that, you know, or if something goes sideways, but I'm getting there. It's just, it's whatever, you know? Yeah. So. yeah. 
that's good though. You that uh, are, are you about talking about financial stuff too often? But go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Are, are are you married? Do you have any kids? Yeah. Any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. I have uh, I have two kids. They're ten and thirteen. Wow. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're turds. Actually, watch this, buddy. Oliver, come here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I've seen pictures of you with your kids before, so kind of. Hey, kinda... Sam, how old are you? I'm 41. Oh, you're still yeah. a baby. Damn, yeah. fucking baby. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there they are. Holy hell, look at that. Even a dude with a bad Say dog hi. takes a bite out oh, of you. Bro. Poor man. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Oh, good job. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> You're pretty good. Good. Oh, I like to see. Yeah. Hey, you, yeah. you like and there's you my, that's my wife, Brittany. She's in the back there. Uh, there she I've goes. Seen her. I've seen her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do that to them all. Awesome the time. Awesome the Steeler game. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, Sam, we uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on the show. We don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, for people that want to know more about you, how can they do that? So, um, Sam Miller Comedy uh, dot com has uh, links to shows and ticket links and all kinds of stuff. Um, currently, unfortunately, my my Facebook got hacked, but I'm working on getting it back. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, Instagram is Sam Miller Comedian, and TikTok is Sam Miller Comedian too. So, yeah, I was kind of wondering um, about that because I sent uh, I sent you uh, some info about our show because I know you normally like to promote the shows that you. Our yeah podcast and, and i should have just done that on your uh when i sent you the email but i just thought well i didn't know it was hacked it looked different i but... friend you on tiktok it was like ah oh, we don't know this fat guy we ain't we ain't taking him man but i don't <laughs> tiktok is crazy man i love like i, I want to say this real quick because i know you guys are old school right yeah. it's like the new comedy landscape or whatever there's pros and cons, you know, it basically used to be that the clubs would put you in front of the people and then that would be your career. But now what's weird is that the people put you in front of the clubs. And like, I used to hate the social media stuff and still it started working for me. And now I think it's fine. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, be honest, I'll be honest with you, Sam. I used to, I used to have my own internet TV show, radio show. Mm -hmm. And I quit traveling when I started doing that because people were coming to me. There was no sense of me going out there when i have people i could bring people to me on the, on the internet yeah you know i mean yeah. i made fox news i made the papers yeah and stuff like that and um i always told people i says you know instead of me i even told fox news i said instead of me going out trying to, to get you know people to like me i just do my show and i got thousands of people come to me there now. you go yeah, yeah there you go ever yeah, since the that's... internet come out i've been happy about it yeah. fox Oh, me too, but it wasn't about anything good. <laughs> <laughs> Never caught me, by the way. <laughs> um, well, Sam, thanks for uh, letting us in. Yeah. We, yeah, we, yeah thank thank you. People, people, people are saying thank you. Yeah, no, thank you hey, to everybody I'm listening. Mad, stuff. Dog, uh, mad Dog on TikTok, or I'm going to be mad at you. All right, I'll, I'll keep it out there, man. I'd love to hear some stories. Like I said, man, I love professional wrestling, man. Um, I, was, I was really big into it when I was younger. Hey, my first match was against Snuka. Oh, no kidding. Wow, that's wild. Well, here's, the, yeah. here's the thing, Sam. I mean, if you ever Is he in prison time, now? If, well, if you He's ever do prison have time, now. if you ever do have time yourself, Sam, then, then you might want to come back on here to yeah. be like a, 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 like a crew member for a little while, temporarily or whatever, when you have time on a Monday night, let me know and uh, we'll, okay. we'll hook you up. Hey, that sounds great, Sean. All right, well, hey, I'll be in. I'll be in touch, man. I'll see you guys later. Okay, thank you. Right. Hey, bro, thank you. Thank you. Buddy. Thank you. All right. All right, that was cool. <laughs> people, asked, people loved him on the internet, man. Oh, of course. I figured, hey, we I mean, how many followers you have? I, I nailed everybody twenty times, and they're going to be sick of me. <laughs> I just went down my Instagram page. Eleven hundred people just hit send, 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 send. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's just people, you know, people are, are, are creatures of habit, I guess. You know, but like I said, our I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a jag off or something. We don't have another guest, right? No, this is this. I gotta go I, in a minute, okay? Yeah, you can go. I can I go. Hey to, guys, I love you, man. Great job tonight. Love you all, John. Okay, bro. Sam, <laughs> Jackie Slauson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot, man. Yeah. Peace out. Love you guys. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I can't leave. Why didn't let? Okay. <laughs> uh -huh.
What a guy, huh? What a guy. Okay, wow. so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed it. Anybody out there listening? That was it. fun. That was everybody, fun as hell, everybody, man. Yeah, everybody maybe enjoyed it, back, it, man. Except my, except the invite to be a crew member. I would love to have one guest be a crew member for temporarily, in case if we need people. Because obviously, you know, some people don't show up, and some people are not able to this week. So last. Well, minute. when uh, Eric said he thought you said, um, let me see her. I thought he said seven tonight. My bad. I guess he's in the same time zone as you. No, it's always so, been six. It's always been well, six. He thought it was seven, so that's why he wasn't on. But he <laughs> said he said something about the link. I said it's on it's on Renegade Radio thing. Well, whatever. It does you know You know what? I saw that too where somebody had said seven. And well, I, no, thought, that's, I was thinking the that's same it. thing. Are they in a different time zone? Yeah, we are. Me and Tony. Yeah. Me and Mad Dog. Okay. Yeah, that's why I always yeah, I, I, six o'clock. I saw that same post time, though. Seven o'clock their time. Yeah, because it's yeah. like we got yeah. people that are the East Coast. I would do the same. Like right now, like the Sam Miller, it's like five oh seven because we're two hours ahead. He's two hours behind us. So when we get Don, Stroud we're the right next, time. When we get Don Stroud on next week, uh, he'll call us at six thirty our time, but it'll be two thirty his time because he's in Hawaii. So, oh wow! So that'll be yeah. good. Oh, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Sam Miller. He's you know a great guy. Oh, yeah. fun, you know now you know now you know I was gonna say yeah you kind of look like Seth Rogen kind of too, but I don't want I don't want to say that. I just you know you don't want to you don't want to roast the guest too too much. You know you want to. I'm sure he would no. laugh about that because I'm sure he's heard that before. But anyway, uh, what I want to talk about uh, a couple more things I want to talk about before we we end the show. Uh, and if anybody else has anything they want to say, we can uh, let you know more about what we were talking about with the with the bar deal. Uh, that there was a fight, so somebody got hurt, and uh, somebody uh, almost died. We'll say so. It just was a bad oh. deal that happened. And uh, when when Tom when when Mama T comes back next week or the week after or whatever, I'll let her explain if she if she wants because she probably will. Because it's already in the news, I, I figured since it's already been out there, it's okay to talk about. It. I'm not, I'm not gonna so, you know, say everything, but it just you know. Are are we still live? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, um, my, I, I know what I know what she's going through because believe me, I've been through all this. You know, being yeah, a girl. And like I said, yeah, there's nothing I, I haven't I seen heard about it. I heard about it and I used it on my news story this morning, but I didn't say the bar, but it was so vague. It was just a, a 19 year old held for stabbing. Uh, somebody was in the hospital in Fargo and that was about it. Numerous hospitalizations, but that was it. And I texted Bob and, and I said, Hey, what went down? I'm just hearing it, you know, from ambulance chaser, I snooze Neil Carlson. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but he never replied to me and so i just figured i'd wait it out i know i'd hear the real story eventually you know yeah, uh, the only thing that scares me or worries me is there's the, the girl is 19 years old well see the and, bar but they just walked the in and... everybody thought that the bar was open and the doors i'm sure weren't locked well no see yeah because well, anybody see, could walk in see you know you know the way that uh since you've been to the place before you know how their apartments are like are you have to go outside in order to go inside the apartments, you know. So you have yep. to go in order to yep. go to the yep. bar. Yep. It's not like see, I thought their apartments was built into the bar where there's like a secret door or whatever you can just go up or whatever, and you, you don't you don't have oh, to no. Go, you know. But no, you have yep. to go outside. So uh, Bob, Bob was just you know he was getting something to eat. And he you know was going to just open it for five minutes, not officially open, but just like just to do that. And and then I don't know. He had some friends that he. That came over, and I just like I said, I'll let Mama T explain it more next week when she comes back, and then uh, it'll be a little bit different. But the thing about what I wanted to bring up, what I was going to say about when you were talking about Neil Carlson, and this is what I was going to say before Sam got on, is that what I don't understand about our area is that our area is so fucked up when it comes to uh, local support, when it comes to financial support, uh, because they'll sponsor a guy who whose news is not accurate. Uh, like you know how much sponsors he has on iNews.tv and how many sponsors he has elsewhere this way and that way. The people that pay him money to keep him going, even in the local paper, can you believe it? They actually on the website on the public or page one publications, 
dot com page or whatever. They got iNews dot TV and stuff everywhere, and it's like they 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 love this guy, and yet he he it's okay for him to give false information, but yet us who are we're more of the entertaining crowd, we're not really. I mean, if there's a local story, sure we'll we'll share it, whatever, but we're not going to give uh, false information, and we're also here to entertain people. And yet, I can't get one fucking sponsor, you know, locally, you know, <laughs> to sponsor. I'm not. Yeah, trying Neil, to Neil doesn't it, like, like. Go ahead. Neil's not a big fan of my company because I'm not afraid to throw him under the bus. I call him an ambulance chaser. I dog the Grand Forks Herald. I dog WDAY. I I I call it like I see it. We have nothing local anymore. It's yeah. all bullshit. And and I I that's why we created our company. Uh, we don't even talk about Fargo. I mean, because all of our local supposedly local news in Grand Forks comes out of Fargo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We have these great we have these great writers at our newspaper that don't get to write. You know, they'll do stories about everywhere else around the country. They don't even do. You know, they don't let these these writers write, and it it's just bullshit. Yeah, we used to we used to subscribe to the Grand Forks Herald every Sunday because I always liked the comics. That was the best part of the paper, you know, back in the day, and it still probably is. But more more realistic than what the news is. I <laughs> read a comic strip and everything. Yeah. I think, anyway. but uh, yeah, I I just I I don't I don't understand it anymore. I don't understand why you know because I remember the days of, of of WDAZ because I got to and I'm sure you've been you probably got to be inside that building too a few times or so Ernie the Angler is a buddy of mine oh okay yeah I, yeah, I Rob Horton. I did my I did an interview with uh Terry Doolam in 2012 and I got yeah. to tour the whole building and it was wonderful it's like magic and that's what inspired me yeah. when I got my job in Rapid City it was pretty much similar to that experience and it was wonderful you know and i'm so sad that it's just like what the fuck is going on with all these big companies taking over little mm -hmm. cities and everything you know it's like i don't understand but i guess i'll never understand because that's just you know you know what else i don't understand i now i i gave you guys a little bit of homework this weekend i don't know if anybody watched it i think sam trust you said you started it or whatever but you didn't, i don't know if you finished or not oh no i, I sent you something i saw it on tiktok even Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there was a, a thing that went on this weekend that uh, uh, a podcast uh, were from Will Sasso's podcast called Dudesy uh, uh, is a podcast that's uh, AI, uh, kind of AI podcast, but it's like, you know, mixed with comedy and mixed with, you know, I don't know who the writers are. I don't know who, who the AI is or whatever, but they did something that I never thought I'd ever hear. And I, when I listened to it, it did sound very familiar, but you could tell it wasn't, obviously it's not the real person, but uh, they tried bringing back uh, George Carlin in AI form. And they did a one hour special, like a one hour still uncensored special called I'm Glad I'm Dead. And the AI did sound almost very similar to George. Like other than a few tones that were different, like his voice was a little bit more, like more clear because he everybody knows George and he was like uh, kind of had a, a regular voice kind of you know kind of like you know kind of uh more or less like he had like a, a lisp or whatever too here and there and whatnot but like but you could tell his voice now they got some of that right but like listen to the comedy and listen to like what they were talking about I was just like I was kind of blown away by it so John did you watch that or we're, i'm sure you would probably well you know, i saw the thing on tiktok that um they were said the same thing was on the thing how they're going to use sam kennison and all these comedians and, and yeah, it's almost like they, it's almost like they want to take over the like i feel sorry for comedians like sam miller because these people are people are stupid enough today to go to these shows to watch these fucking holograms or wherever the fuck they are you yeah. know what i mean they thought yeah, about I, doing I that look at it. it. Good. Yeah, John. Yeah, I look at it two different ways. A lot of these people, when you talk about the Sam Kinnisons and the George Carlins and stuff, and and the holograms and the way they're doing things now, most of the people watching these have no idea who those comedians were because this was before their time. Right. And at least it gives them an idea of what they're about, so it might turn them on to them. But 
people like us that have seen their shows time and time, we can tell. We can tell because, like like Sean said, the inflection and the way they have to splice everything together, it's not perfect, and we all know it. But so I think it's got its pros and cons. I myself don't like it. I'd rather just watch old video. Right. You know. I was just gonna say that. Yep. Well, see, I was I was impressed by just how they how they got the voice to almost sound almost exactly like him. Like the, other than a few things that I noticed. It almost sounded just like George. Yeah. So that's kind of scary, yeah. but I'm kind of wondering what they would do because they talk about Sam Gibson. I wonder how he would sound, you know? Because I know how when he you sounds. first sent that to me, Sean, I thought that was an impersonator. Oh, no, it was an AI. No, I know, no, I know, no, I know I've seen it, but yeah. <laughs> I guess the same company did something with Tom Brady, and Tom Brady did not find that uh, amusing they, to turn him into a uh, comedian for an AI special. And, uh, he didn't like that at all, I guess, you know, because it wasn't that funny. It was like he was very dry in his uh, presentation, like, you know, from what I was listening to anyway. If you if you right. know that at all for Tom Brady, yeah. these are your football guys and everything, or you are John Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so other than that, uh, I think that's will be good for tonight. Uh, next week, we got Don Stroud, uh, who's a legendary actor uh, slash surfer. Uh, he's been in a lot of movies, including the Buddy Holly story, which is one of my personal. Yeah, favorite. yeah. And because uh, he played the oh, drummer, yeah. he was a drummer in Buddy Holly story. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, then we'll have Vincent Berry, uh, author of the, uh, he interviewed or did a book on one of the uh, Bon Erica guys, and uh, we'll have him on in the next hour. But uh, other than that, I appreciate you guys for coming on the show and uh, all you listeners out there, all you, or I should say all you watchers out there. We're adding more to the YouTube channel as time moves on and Spotify and all these other things that I'm trying to get our stuff out there, even doing a little TikTok a little bit sometimes here and there, just to get the word out and just to let people know that we are here. It's Renegade Radio. We're the only official podcast that I can say in northern Minnesota, other than what John's got going on, uh, John Roberts. Uh, we are the official entertainment source, anyway, of a of a genuine podcast. So I, I agree for being a part of today's show. So other than I that, agree. Uh, I'm Frankie Slauson, along with Screaming Sam and John Roberts and Mad Dog, and we thank Sam Miller for being on the show tonight. And uh, uh, we'll see you again next week for another edition of Renegade Radio. Love you guys. That's it. Hey, man. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.